In the words of today's hero, it's clobbering time. So in that spirit, it's time to clobber the history and the origin of Marvel and Fantastic Four's Ben Grimm, aka The Thing. Before we do, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I upload videos just like this every single week. Alright, let's jump into our story. As one of the oldest characters in Marvel Comics history, Ben Grimm's history has been intrinsically tied to the Fantastic Four, commonly considered the first family of comics for over half a century. But for as close as they are, Ben is perhaps even more closely linked with his creator, Jack the King Kirby. An artist whose dynamic poses and Kirby crackle revitalized comic books with new energy and whose works remain utter classics to this day. Ben Grimm was born on Yancey Street in New York City's impoverished Lower East Side to Jewish parents Daniel and Elsie Grimm. The Grimm family had a tough time making ends meet, especially as his father's alcoholism made it tough for him to keep a job. Ben's brother Daniel was the head of the Yancey Street gang, and so that's where most of their money for food and bills came from. But when Ben was 8 years old, Daniel was killed in the streets. When Ben's parents both died, a lot changed for him. Ben became the head of the Yancey Street gang, and he moved in with his uncle Jake, a guy who had gone from the streets himself to becoming a physician. And with that, he showed Ben that there was a path out of the neighborhood without violence and crime. So Ben left the gang, went to school, and ended up with a football scholarship to Empire State University. It was at university that he met Reed Richards and Victor Von Doom. But let's pause here for a moment. Remember Jack Kirby? Jacob Kurtzberg, the man who would take on the name Jack Kirby, was also born on the Lower East Side of Manhattan to Rose and Ben, Jewish immigrants who had come to America from Galicia, the West European area that came to be known as the Austro-Hungarian Empire until a year after Jacob's birth. To help their poor family, Jack took to the streets, namely Delancey Street, phonetically similar to Yancey Street. Kirby's gang would often fight with the Italian gangs and the African-American gangs that lived around their Essex Street neighborhood. You see how this mirrors Grimm? And much like Ben, Jacob's brother David was attacked by rival gang members. When Kirby started pursuing a career in illustration, he wanted to be American, and so he, feeling like he needed to change his name to accomplish that and broaden the appeal of his work, anglicized his name from Jacob Kurtzberg to Jack Kirby. The idea for the Fantastic Four was a rough idea that Stanley Lieber, aka Stan Lee, had, which he explored, at the urging of his wife as a last hurrah before retirement. And so using the Marvel method, his partner and Kirby fleshed out the characters more, working on personalities and then powers for their new team, and they became a hit, and Stan Lee stayed on with the company, even as it evolved from Atlas Comics to Marvel Comics. Ben himself, it said, is a reflection of Kirby in his gruff exterior, fighting spirit, cigar smoking, poker playing, and lovable nature. Other accounts also attribute Biff Bailey of DC Comics' Sea Devils as part of the inspiration for Grimm. Alright, let's jump back to Ben. In university, Reed, in a moment of foreshadowing, told Ben that he wanted to build a rocket. And so Ben, thinking it would never happen, said, yes, I'll fly it for you. After school, Ben joined the United States Air Force and became a test pilot, ultimately doing flight testing and astronaut work for NASA. Also during these early days, he fought with Captain Savage and his Leatherneck Raiders and Logan. By this time, Reed Richards had been working on an American spaceship program, building a prototype as America's answer to the Soviet cosmonaut programs and the race to get to space first. Funding on the American ship was cut, but Reed said it was vital to get to space first, so he hatched a daring plan. They were going to steal it. At first, Ben said, no, that's a dumb idea, but Sue called him a coward, so he said, all right, fulfilling the promise he made to Reed when they were back at ESU. And the ship, dubbed Marvel One, now had a crew in Reed, Reed's girlfriend Sue Storm, Sue's brother Johnny, and Reed's friend and pilot Ben Grimm. And this crew snuck out onto the launch pad, climbed aboard Marvel One, and launched. But he launched right into a solar flare that had charged up the Van Allen belt trapped around Earth by Earth's magnetic field with cosmic radiation. Reed didn't shield the cabin, and so when the solar flare washed over the ship, it bathed everything and everyone in cosmic radiation. This is when the crew became the Fantastic Four with atomic powers that were both apropos and ironic at the same time. Reed Richards with rigid scientific laws and an expandable mind became the stretchy, flexible Mr. Fantastic. The cool guy with the short fuse and hot head, Johnny Storm, became Human Torch. And the beautiful lady, Sue Storm, who wanted to be seen, became someone you couldn't see, an invisible woman. And the emotional heart of gold on your sleeve, Ben Grimm, became the rocky, hard, thick-skinned The Thing. Their powers were that of the four elements, fire for Johnny, air for Sue, water for Reed, and earth for Ben. Their powers balanced their personalities with their insecurities, their strengths, and their weaknesses. Following along with Marvel Tragedy Origins, almost everyone was happy with their new powers except Ben. He thought he'd gone from this man to this monster. 
he transformed into Jack's version of the Gollum, a Jewish folklore story thousands of years old that was written about in 1808 by none other than the Brothers Grimm. He was depressed and lonely and wishing for the day when Reed would find a cure for his condition. Ben felt like he was an outsider and alone, though he was with friends close enough to be a chosen family. Ben developed his powers and became something that society looked away from. It's exactly this that made him immediately marvel, deeply human and richly nuanced. Feeding his feelings of self-worth, Ben liked Sue Storm, the well-to-do girl from Long Island who chose Reed over him, the kid from the poor part of town. Sue said he turned into some sort of thing, and now full of self-contempt, Ben took on the name The Thing. He was not happy with himself and often hid these feelings behind self-deprecating humor or his fedora and trench coat attire. Their first encounter took to Monster Isle to stop Mole Man from tunneling under everywhere and taking over Earth. They then were replaced by the Skrulls, which were alien shapeshifters from outer space, who started committing crimes in their place. The Thing's replacement, for example, smashed up an oil rig. The Skrull plan was to remove the Fantastic Four by framing them for crimes and having their own people take them off the board so the Skrulls could dominate the planet uninhibited. So they ended up replacing their replacements and the Thing and the team went up to the Skrull ship to stop them. Next they stopped Miracle Man, although things were not good between Ben and Johnny by this time. Ben was pissed that Johnny was always cracking jokes and playing pranks on him. And the rivalry came to a head when Johnny stormed off, quitting the team. That's when Johnny ran into a bum in the Bowery that turned out to be Namor the Submariner. And Namor summoned a sea monster that the Thing was able to defeat by stuffing a nuclear bomb down its throat. Things quickly got, shall we say, timely? Doctor Doom took the Fantastic Four back to his castle in Latveria and ended up transporting them back in time to the 18th century to steal treasure from Blackbeard the Pirate. So they found some pirates and it turns out that Ben Grimm was christened as Blackbeard until the famous pirate from history was actually the Thing. Then, Ben met a blind sculptor named Alicia Masters, stepdaughter to the supervillain Puppet Master. The Puppet Master hypnotized the Thing into attacking his team and kidnapping an invisible woman, but he was quickly defeated and his control over Ben removed, and by issue 10 of the series, Ben and Alicia were dating. The FF, the Thing included, made it onto the cover of Amazing Spider-Man number 1. Peter Parker wanted to get J. Jonah Jameson off of Spider-Man as he was pushing his Spidey is a menace narrative. So Spider-Man broke into the FF's headquarters building and ended up brawling with the FF. He also showed up in Avengers issue 1 as the team joined up with Earth's Mightiest to stop Loki. In FF issue 12, the Thing and the Hulk met and fought for the first time as the team was hired by General Ross to stop him. The team then used Doctor Doom's time travel machine to head back into the past and they went to ancient Egypt looking for a cure for Alicia's blindness and ended up slaves of Ramatut, the pharaoh who would come to be known as Kang the Conqueror. After Reed and Sue got married, they asked Ben to become the godfather to their son Franklin Richards. So he was both uncle and godfather. In Strange Tales 116, the puppet master was back and trying to get Human Torch to fight his friend the Thing, but their friendship proved too strong for the villain. Then, Doctor Doom put together a team of convicts, and one of them shot Grimm with a cosmic beam which reverted the thing back to Ben just for a few minutes. But it was long enough for the crook hopped up on XZ-12 to punch Ben out, and the convict took him to Doom. Doom also made a robot thing in order to capture Reed Richards. Then the thing, the real thing, not the robot, busted the FF out of confinement and thing fought with Doctor Doom. A solar wave that Doom knew about opened up a portal to space, and the thing knocked Doom into it, saving the day. The Thing then had a rematch with Hulk while Hulk was now in New York trying to destroy the Avengers. Then the Thing reverted to his human side again. Although he always wanted Reed to find a cure, part of him wanted to stay as the Thing as he believed that this is who Alicia fell in love with and he didn't want a loser. His concern though was solved when he went back to being the Thing so he could fight Doctor Doom and he ended up crushing Doom's hands. And when they met for a rematch, Doom now had the power cosmic and he was out for revenge against the Thing for what he'd done to his hands. But Ben wouldn't lay down, he wouldn't quit, his heart won that day. In Fantastic Four issue 51, a villain took the place of the Thing, wanting to attack Reed in another dimension. Facing certain death, the imposter Thing saw how honorable and selfless Reed was and ended up sacrificing himself by throwing Reed back to the Baxter building as he slowly descended into being burnt up in atmospheric re-entry. When the real Thing showed up, he overheard them talking about their friend and how Ben's own heroism reached out across dimensions to touch the imposter and he faced his fate not as monster but as man. Shortly after this, Galactus came to Earth and imprisoned Silver Surfer on the planet as punishment. 
and Dr. Doom ended up stealing the Surfer's board. And it was the Thing who was able to knock him off the board and return it to the Silver Surf. Soon after, Reed found a way to change Ben back to human form, but this was short-lived as he gave up Reed's cure in order to save his love, Alicia. And as Reed was continuously looking for other ways to cure Ben, he found one method in the blood of the inhuman crystal. So Ben was put in ice for stasis, and by the time he was out, he was cured and had the power to change back and forth at will. But his personality also changed, making him short-tempered and angry. He dumped Alicia and quit the Fantastic Four, and then he was rampaging through New York City. And in Fantastic Four 112, the Hulk and the Thing fought another fight, an epic brawl in Central Park. At the end, Hulk punched a distracted Thing and it looked like Ben was killed, but Reed was able to save him back in his lab and even returned his personality back to normal. A while after this, Ben appeared in Marvel Feature, where the leader and an alien named Kurgo forced him to fight with the Hulk or else an Ultrex bomb would destroy the planet Earth. And from there, and now at the height of his popularity with readers, The Thing went to a recurring starring role in Marvel 2-in-1, which had him teaming up with the Marvel Universe, each issue, and which found him working security at Project Pegasus. And there he ran into people like Bill Foster, Thundra, Deathlock, Nuclo, and Wandar, who changed his name to Aquarian, and even fought with Quasar during this time period. The ending of 2-in-1 led to The Thing getting his own 36-issue ongoing series that lasted from 1983 to 1986. In the next story, The Thing and the Hulk fought again, and when The Thing was exposed to gamma radiation, he reverted back to his human form. So, with him essentially depowered now, Luke Cage joined the Fantastic Four in his place. Reed built Ben a mech suit to use, although in an encounter with Galactus, The Thing reverted back to his rocky facade. During Secret Wars, when the heroes and villains of Earth were transferred to Beyonder's Battle World, Ben realized that he could still transform back and forth at will, so he stayed on Battle World for a while after the Secret Wars concluded with She-Hulk in his place on the team. He fought with both Ultron and a bad side of himself that came out calling itself Grimm the Sorcerer. Eventually, the thing went back to Earth. Unfortunately, this proved to be a problem because while he was away on Battle World, Human Torch started shacking up with Alicia. When Ben saw this, he quit the team and instead started hanging out with the West Coast Avengers. And during this time, he also started working with Sharon Ventura, who was wrestling with the UCWF. Luckily, this Alicia turned out to be a scroll named Leah, and not the real Alicia who was trapped in suspended animation, and who still loved Ben. The Fantastic Four vs. X-Men miniseries in 1987 by Chris Claremont opened up with the thing ripped open down to his interior hide and She-Hulk murdered him bleeding out her green blood with a dead Sue Storm in Reed's arms and a crying Franklin near his feet as well as Wolverine, a dead shadow cat in his arms, and the X-Men strung up dead on a wood stakes when Reed ripped his face off and he was Doctor Doom. Yeah, that was one of Franklin's nightmares. The teams ended up fighting because Reed said he couldn't help save Shadowcat even though he had a device that supposedly could. In the fight, the Thing clapped his hands together so hard that a shockwave knocked Storm and Magneto to the floor. Then Rogue kissed Ben and absorbed his powers and became a female Thing. She thought she'd be attacking a toad, the narration in the panel says, as she absorbed his thoughts and psyche and the totality of his being she quote, touched the soul of a prince, unquote. She saw who he truly was inside. Ben went back to the FF when Reed and Sue decided to leave in order to raise their son Franklin. So in their place, he had the Inhuman Crystal, and the second Miss Marvel, Sharon Ventura, the woman from his wrestling work, joined the team. Sharon became mutated by cosmic rays, much like the FF, and she was transformed into a she-thing, which caused Ben's form to mutate into something more devolved, something more spiky, but yet more powerful than before. It took about 20 issues, but Ben passed the leadership baton back to Reed, and by issue 350, the thing was back to his traditional look. In 2002, Ben's Jewish heritage was finally written into the books, official, in the form of flashbacks to his childhood. And though he appeared in a yarmulke for a Jack Kirby card in the mid-1970s, Ben says he kept his religion to himself all these years because he, quote, didn't want people thinking Jews were all monsters like him, unquote. In 2004, Dr. Doom returned from Hal as a ghost and his spirit took over the thing's body, which forced Reed to kill his friend with an energy weapon. Doom said he would kill everyone if Reed didn't fire the weapon at Ben, so Ben said with a tear in his eye to kill him. With Ben now dead, Reed was desperate to find a way to bring his friend back, and Reed found a way to transport to the afterlife. And Dan, Ben's deceased brother, tells Reed that Ben can't go through the gates of heaven because Reed is keeping Ben's body alive on life support back on Earth. They end up meeting God, resembling Jack Kirby, and he sends the team and a resurrected Ben Grimm back to Earth. And now back on Earth, Ben found that his stock portfolio had spiked in value, and he was now a millionaire and started hanging out with his nephew, godson Franklin, and Lockjaw, the lovable dog from the Inhumans. 
In 2005, Ben starred in a Fantastic Four and X-Men crossover miniseries called X4, which was written by Akira Yoshida, C.B. Sobolski's former pen name. Then during Marvel Universe's first superhero civil war, Grimm was pro-registration until he saw a battle on Yancey Street and that's when Grimm became neutral. He was mad that in the fight, civilians were being forgotten about. And mad about it all, he headed off to France. Then Dr. Doom came from the future with a robot version of Namor and Black Panther to stop Reed from enacting Idea 101. Once Doom said, I hate Reed because we're all so similar, the Thing became enraged and he fought with Dr. Doom in an epic battle. Nearly defeated a future Ben Grimm and the FF showed up to collect the time-traveling dictator. And Doom shot the future Ben with an energy weapon beam that changed him to human. But then the two FF teams fought over the prisoner. It was thing versus thing. Ultimately, they shook hands and Dr. Doom was defeated again. During World War Hulk, the Thing and the Hulk fought once more and came to blows as Ben tried to stop the rampaging Hulk in his warbound. Once that concluded, the Skrull Lila was back, the same one that had posed as Alicia all those years ago. This time, she was posing as Sue Storm. She sent the entire Baxter building into the negative zone and so Ben had to fend off the hordes of Annihilus to protect Franklin and Valeria. Ben also had a brief thing, pun intended, with a lady named Debbie Green. It was serious enough that they were to wed, but Ben became a runaway groom. He didn't want to put her in harm's way, so he left. Then the Annihilation Wave burst forth from the negative zone in a war that ended with Johnny dying, sacrificing himself in Ben's place to close a portal and save the universe. And now stricken with grief, Ben and the Fantastic Four disbanded in its wake. Reed created a philanthropic offshoot called the Future Foundation, or for short, FF. In the FF title, Spider-Man also joined, and Valeria invited Doctor Doom to join too, and upon learning of this, Doom and Ben fought. One of the first things they had to do was make Ben a tuxedo. Later, Luke Cage offered Ben a spot on the New Avengers, and he accepted once he realized he could stay with the Future Foundation and be a part of the New Avengers at the same time. Then during Fear Itself, Grimm became angrier, breaker of souls. One of the serpent's seven fallen hammers fell on Yancey Street, so the Future Foundation took it in to study it, but Ben picked it up, and that's when he was transformed. And as angrier, Ben fought Spider-Man, Red Hulk, the Fantastic Four, and Thor, and it was Franklin Richards who helped revert Ben back to being the Thing. Another story from 2012 found Johnny's girlfriend Darla Deering joining Fantastic Four in the FF, taking on the name Miss Thing. Reed was taking the team on a space journey and they needed to find replacements in case they didn't come back, so Johnny asked Darla. When they didn't come back, they became the new team and Darla wore the mech suit that Reed had built for Ben back when he lost his powers. So she had to bring the Thing Rings together for the exosuit to form around her. When the Phoenix Force took over the Phoenix Five, the Thing was the one to take on Namor. After this, Ben was sent to a superhuman prison called The Raft, accused of killing Puppet Master. It turns out that the current warden of The Raft was Ben's old flame, Sharon Ventura, the She-Thing. It turns out that Ben was indeed innocent, and the one killed was from another reality. During the final incursion before Secret Wars, the Thing and Future Foundation perished after the hull of Reed's life raft was breached. Then on Battleworld, God Emperor Doom made the Thing, literally, the wall that protected the perimeter called the Shield as protection from the Marvel zombie-infested Deadlands. And it was Thanos of all people who convinced Ben as the Shield to rise up and strike back at God Emperor Doom. And so he broke off from the wall and the Thing, now massive in size, brought the war to Doom's door. But Franklin Von Doom used Galactus to destroy the Thing and he fell in the war, victim to Galactus energy blasts. After Secret Wars concluded, it appeared that Sue and Reed and Franklin and Valeria were lost to space, dead and gone. So Ben joined up with the Guardians of the Galaxy and became close with Rocket Raccoon. Eventually, the FF came back to Earth, and in Fantastic Four number 5, which in legacy numbering is issue 650, and after over 55 years of dating and romance, Ben finally proposed to Alicia. In the wake of this, Reed Richards called for Johnny and Ben to help them fight the Griever at the end of all things. And when the entire Fantastic Four returned to Earth, Ben and Alicia got married. Then the Puppet Master was causing havoc again, controlling the Hulk, and he fought with the Thing. And in the brawl, it looked as though Ben was losing, but Alicia reminded him he had heart, where Hulk doesn't. So the Thing mustered up every last bit of strength he had, every last bit of heart, and punched the Hulk in the face so hard that Hulk was rendered unconscious, although the rocky facade of Thing's arm was nearly shattered to bits and destroyed in the process. So he was given a vibranium cast to keep in his arm. Ben made a brief cameo in War of the Realms, depicted fighting with Captain Marvel and the Fantastic Four against Malekith's forces. In Donny Cates' Absolute Carnage miniseries, we meet a venomized thing. Then Wolverine, the Thing, Captain America, and Spider-Man teamed up with Eddie Brock to take down the winged Dark Carnage and his Hive army. Ben was also in the 2019 Contagion series where he ran into an infected Mole Man and his Moloids. 
Then during the Annihilation Scourge event, as the Cancerverse and Sentry's Revengers invaded the Negative Zone, Ben and the FF jumped into the Negative Zone to try to save it. At the end of 2020, Grimm got a noir detective story in Grimm Noir as he had to figure out why the demon Despair was on Yancey Street. And Dan Slott's ongoing FF series went on, where Ben attended the ceremony to donate Marvel 1 to the National Air and Space Museum. But Reed and Johnny built the Marvel 2, and they all went to the planet they were heading for on their very first mission where they got their powers. Ben ended up himself fighting monsters in Lowtown on this new planet, called the 500 Horde or Freak Alley. He ended up leading them in a fight against the Overseer in Hightown. And Ben almost crossed the line he could never come back from. He almost killed the Overseer after he learned that it was his fault that the cosmic radiation changed them, but Sue stopped him just in time. Back home, Ben and Reed talked over a champagne bottle he was going to christen Marvel 1 with if they hadn't stole the ship. And he told him he held on to that as well as hanging on to a lot of feelings and hurt and resentment and blame. But he was letting it go. And so he continues on, the old lovable blue eyes in Marvel Comics, transcending media from comics to screen. Ben was on television a few times as well, animated in 1967 for the first time, and then again in 1978 for the new Fantastic Four animated series with Ben Grimm, Sue, Reed, and Herbie the Robot instead of Johnny, whose rights were with another studio who wanted to make a show about him. The third time was in 1994 for Fantastic Four, the animated series. The Thing made his live-action debut in Roger Corman's 1994 film, played by Michael Bailey Smith. And before Disney bought Fox, Fox made three FF movies. Michael Chiklis played Ben Grimm in the 2005 and 2007 films, while in 2015 it was Jamie Bell as The Thing. And who will play him in the MCU? That remains to be seen. He's also been in countless video games like Strike Force, Ultimate Alliance, Contest of Champions, and Future Fight. And so that's the story of Ben Grimm, Old Blue Eyes, The Thing. That's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.